Hello Tech World, this is Tech Thoughts. In this short video we'll be discussing Hyper-V bin files and the automatic stop action setting of your VMs. As always, if you prefer written documentation, you can reference the corresponding article for this video on the techthoughts.info blog by clicking the link here or by referencing the comments below. Let's go ahead and get started. So what I've got here is a Hyper-V host that has a couple of VMs on it. And let's take a quick look at this 2012 R2 VM that I've got provisioned here and take a look at its settings. Now we come all the way down to the automatic stop action, we can see that it's currently set to save. And what this means is that if the host goes down, so if I come down here and I were actually to reboot or shut down this host, this is the action that will actually be executed for the VM on what's going to happen in the event that the host goes down. So if we have this set to save the virtual machine state, which it currently is defaulted to, then Hyper-V will reserve disk space in order to kind of suspend that VM in order to save all of its RAM contents to the hard drive so that when, it, when the host does come back up, it'll be able to reference that location and bring that VM out of suspension. The way this is accomplished is that when you have the VM set to save the virtual machine state, it will actually temporarily reserve a space on the hard disk in order to save the contents of memory of that VM. This is saved at the GUID location of the VM. So if we were to pop over real quick and take a look at that, we see that it's currently empty. And the reason for that is that is because this 2012 R2 VM is, is presently off. With the VM in the off state, there's no need to save the RAM contents. So the bin file is not actively provisioned inside this location. But notice that the second that I turn it on, then we immediately get a bin file generated. As that VM starts up, the bin file will grow to match the size of the RAM that is allocated to that VM. So we click refresh and we see now that that bin file has grown to approximately 8 gigs and we take a look at that actual 2012 R2 VM, we see that it's currently provisioned for 8 gigs of memory. So the contents of the VM's RAM is not currently stored in this bin file location. However, in the event of a host shutdown, this bin file is acting as a, a storage reserve. So you are reserving 8 gigs of space right now on whatever location that you have the VM stored at. And during the event of a host shutdown, the VM will be suspended and its contents of RAM will be written to this reserved 8 gigs of space. Keep in mind that if your VM has a lot of RAM allocated to it, let's say 96 gigs of RAM, that 96 gigs of hard drive space will be reserved in the bin file in the event that the host needs to be shut down and the VM's RAM needs to be saved to the bin file location. In instances where you have quite a few VMs with large amounts of RAM, you can see how this could directly impact the availability of disk space that you have. Let's use PowerShell real fast to calculate how much disk space is actually being utilized for the bin file reserve locations on this hype. So in this script, I'll go ahead and get the VMs. I'll loop through each VM and determine is their automatic stop action set to save. If it is, I'll go ahead and perform some math to determine how much RAM is actually being utilized for those VMs and I'll total that out because the amount of RAM again equals the size of the bin file which will tell me how much actual hard drive space is being utilized by the VMs on this particular device. So I'll go ahead and run this script and we see that the script returns a result that the VM bin files are reserving a total of 12 gig of hard drive space. You'll have to evaluate your environment and make a determination if suspending the VMs makes sense for you. I found that the disk space cost really isn't worth the ability to temporarily suspend the VM if the host were to go down. I typically set my VMs to shut down the guest operating system. That way if the host goes down, a clean shutdown is executed on the VM. And if the VM's automatic start action is set to automatically start if it was running when the service stopped, then the VM will be turned back on gracefully once the host comes back up. There are also many circumstances with applications and services where a suspension of the VM is actually not advantageous, such as domain controllers or SQL, where the suspension of the VM can actually lead to additional problems. All this consideration is for standalone hypervisors only. If you have a Hyper-V cluster, then your highly available virtual machine should never be set to save, because in the event of a host shutdown, the HA VMs will simply be live migrated to a, another node in the cluster. So you can go ahead and safely recoup that disk space of the bin file by changing all of your HAVMs for their automatic stop action to shut down. In your existing environment, if you've decided to go ahead and change this setting for the automatic stop action, unfortunately that will incur some downtime as this can only be changed if the VM is off. So we can see on a running VM, if we go to settings, 
we're unable to change this while the VM is running. We can, however, minimize that downtime by engaging PowerShell. User prompts here to make sure that they absolutely want to shut down the VMs. We can essentially get all the VMs, loop through each VM we find, and if that VM is automatic stop action is set to save, we'll go ahead and stop that VM, set that VM's automatic stop action to shut down, and then go ahead and start that VM right back up. So this is a quick and easy script to make that change in your environment, recoup the bin file disk costs, and get your VMs back up and running in very quick order. So let's go ahead and execute this script real fast by clicking play. It's from an administrator ISC window. And the first thing it's going to ask us is, are we absolutely sure that we want to shut down these VMs? And we'll go ahead and say yes to that. And notice that it's gone ahead and shut those VMs down for us. Happens quite rapidly. And it went ahead and started them back up. And if we right click on 2012 R2 now and go to settings, the automatic stop action has been set to shut down for us and that VM is already starting to come back up and is already back on the boot screen now. And if we revisit the bin file location, we can see after we refresh, the bin file is now only taking up 4K because it is no longer required that it reserve hard disk space in order to save the contents of RAM to disk. I hope you found this short video on Hyper-V bin files and the automatic stop action setting helpful. And don't forget to check out the corresponding article on techthoughts.info.